What's happening guys, this is James Blonde with MMOHunts.com with a quick weekly recap for MMO news and announcements for the week ending January 20th, 2014. And our first bit of news this week is actually really exciting. An English server is finally up and running for ArcAge with 24-7 server support and updates. Now, no official beta or launch schedule has been given yet, but they've actually started their first testing phase, which is the friends and family alpha. And the cool part is that Tryon Worlds mentioned last week that it'll be less than six months before we actually see ArcAge launching. And that right there is exciting enough for me. As of right now, it's been reported that the UI is about 80% translated to English and much of the quest text has been given at least a first pass at translation. It's coming along, it's coming along. Next up, Continent of the Ninth Seal gets part three of its fourth expansion this past week, and now the Guardian's Tower will increase 20 levels up to the 40th floor. Players will have a chance to battle new monsters who have seemed to set up shop in the newly updated floors, and in addition to these baddies, there will be new quests available for each newly added floor, not to mention you can actually run into some of the boss monsters that you fought in the past. As a whole, the fourth expansion brings quite a bit of content to C9. Now, one game we never seem to run out of news for is Elsword, and last week they started moving their players around in style with a crazy new mount system. All capable of warding off monsters' attacks, three different mounts are available at launch, and each mount has their own arsenal of attacks. You know, like heat-seeking missiles, epic laser flares, or incinerator death breath. You know, that's stuff that normally comes on mounts. Currently, there are events going on to let players try out these new mounts for a limited period of time, but that's not the only thing happening in Elsword. They've also introduced two new dungeons to Sander to take Elsword to the next chapter, along with raising the level cap from 64 to 67. And speaking of mounts and mounted combat, the European version of Dragon's Prophet just received an update to add in mounted combat, and thus several healing, tanking, and damage dealing skills are now available to dragons, which will allow for a more dynamic combat experience along with more entertaining fights for players to enjoy. you think this would be something that they would have, you know, put into the game as early as possible seeing that the primary feature in the game is to capture, train, ride, and fight with dragons. But another feature of this patch is the legendary dungeon Shrine of Hondras, putting those water dragons to good use, fighting off water monsters, avoiding dangerous whirlpools, and going up against five new bosses. It's a pretty decent sized update and with the mounted combat, a nice added feature at that. Smite is also coming along with its pre-launch updates and changes. The latest patch introduces Geb, the god of Earth. Now, Geb's abilities deliver shock and awe among his enemies. Abilities like Rollout, where Geb morphs into a massive ball of rolling boulders, starting out really slow, but building up speed to mow over enemies while being immune to CC. His ultimate cataclysm looks cool, but seems to be a little light on the damage side. However, with Stone Shield, Geb can turn himself or an ally into a tanky beast. Now, the other part of this update features a nice update to the arena mode. Matches will now rotate between the original and new nighttime arena map. Other than the visual changes, they also changed up the rules a little bit. Now, the Manticore spawns after every 10 players killed on one side. If your side can actually escort the Manticore through the other team's portal, the other team loses 10 points. It may be simple, but it is a cool new feature. I'm not gonna lie, I had to hop in this past weekend to check it out for myself. A new playable class was unveiled last week for Black Gold Online. New to the roster is the Spell Sword, a protege of wielding devastating sorcery and exceptional swordplay. Their role specialization makes them great melee DPS and agility tanks, which are capable of wielding magic to boost their strength and cripple their opponents. They are very balanced and highly adaptable to fit nearly any role in the battlefield, therefore making them an excellent base unit for enhancing a team's strength. There really isn't any gameplay footage of this class that we know of yet, but from the screenshots, they might be worth something looking forward to. Next up, it looks like Hero of the Obelisk is set to launch a hefty content update early next month. This one plans to introduce new hero levels, a new PvP area, and an overall upgrade to the gameplay mechanics. The new hero levels will start past level 50 with special titles and cosmetic items and an entirely new type of dungeon is in the workings that has players defending a tower as they work their way through its 10 floors. Kinda sounds like the C9 update. But if it's not just the PvE you're looking for, the new arena lets players duel it out in front of spectators, or you can gather up your guildmates for an all-out war siege battle, allowing up to 200 players to battle it out all at once. This is definitely the type of updates we like to see in games like this. Likewise, Dragon Nest starts their 2014 strong with a Requiem of Twilight update, bringing in greater dangers, more balance, and a new hardcore mode that has players dying to try. 
Beyond the balance changes, players will have a new weapon to wield against the new threat. The new Talisman system features powerful lusters capable of boosting your stats or utility to previously unreachable heights. That'll probably come in handy when facing the Dark Scientist Jasmine in her last stand, or trying out the Desert Dragon Nest in Hardcore Mode. And just like the other updates so far this week, this one is a pretty good sized one, so check the link in the description below for a more in-depth look at the latest update to Dragon's Nest. Friday, January 31st marks the official release date for Loadout. Now, in the past, for some reason, the MMOX community thought this game wasn't actually free to play. Well, it is. You just had to spend a little bit of cash in the game to get in initially, but after the launch this month, the game will be available on Steam free to play to everyone. The development team has spent the last three years fine-tuning the mechanics and embracing the maniacal and addictive nature of Loadout's gameplay, ensuring that their debut title will deliver on its highly anticipated launch day. The crafting system in this game is absolutely insane, with over 44 billion possible creations that help shape your character into defining your own class and playstyle. Uh, if you're looking for a great third-person shooter, this one will be available at the end of next week. Next up, if you didn't get a chance to experience Yulgang 2, you'll get to now. Open beta has officially started for Southeast Asia, but with no IP block, so the game is actually available to anyone, and it's also in English. This game boasts an action martial arts combat system and seems like a simple alternative to Age of Wushu. From the looks of the trailer here, it seems like it might be worth taking a look at. The PvP in the game might be fun, based on its supposedly unique combat system, but who knows? And for our final announcement this week, Kingdom Under Fire 2 is having its first experience beta test this coming week on January 23rd through the 26th. I've gotta be honest, this game looks badass. It's got a unique combat system made for tons of enemies, as you can probably tell from the gameplay going on here, but that alone is cool. Going up against armies of enemies while at the same time commanding lots of troops of your own, RTS style, it, yeah, that's actually really cool. Now the drawback here is that it seems to be a bit difficult and annoying to get a key into this closed beta, but it's probably still worth a shot. If it looks good to you, check the link in the description below for their official homepage and connect with them on Facebook for a chance at a beta key. But other than that, guys, that's about all we have for MMOs this week. MMO news, that is. Check the links below for more info on the news featured here or head over to MMOHuts.com slash news for even more news. Feel free to discuss the news in the comments below or head over to MMOHuts.com slash forums. But until next time, guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers.